and this is the VXCAN V4 leak detector. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use this device to find leaks on the intake system of our vehicle, in the exhaust of our vehicle, and in the EVAP system of our vehicle. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I placed a link in the description down below to this unit in case you wanna get one. But now let me show you what you get in this kit and how the system works. First off, we get the leak detector, which is entirely encased in metal, so it feels pretty heavy duty. It also features a digital pressure gauge and an airflow control knob and a pressure control knob. And for those of you looking to test the EVAP system, they have included the EVAP service tool and an EVAP service port adapter. And finally, to power the leak detector, they have included a set of alligator clips. The clips are gonna go to the battery of our vehicle and the other end is gonna get plugged in directly into the side of the unit. But now let's add some oil to the leak detector so we can begin to use it. And as far as the oil, people usually use Baby Johnson's mineral oil. However, a generic mineral oil can be used as well. They have included this little funnel that allows us to pour the oil into the machine. Now you could potentially pour the oil directly from the main bottle. However, they have included a smaller bottle, which I think is gonna make pouring the oil easier. I'm gonna put some of that oil into the machine while looking at the window to make sure I don't exceed the maximum fill level. All right, that should be enough. Next, I will connect the alligator clips to the battery and then the power plug to the leak detector. The unit begins blowing air like a small air compressor since we are on air only mode. Now let me show you how to use it. The knob allows us to control the amount of air in liters per minute. Turning it to the right decreases the flow and turning it to the left increases the flow. To set the air pressure, I cover the hole with my finger. Notice the pressure reading is around 2 psi. Turning the upper knob clockwise will increase the air pressure. Now to decrease the air pressure, I'll release the air, turn the knob counterclockwise and cover the hole again to check the pressure. Notice we are back to around 2 psi. Now for most tests, 1 psi will be more than enough, so I'll decrease the pressure further. Notice I'm down to around half a psi. Now I can turn the knob to increase the pressure till I get about 1 psi. We can also change the unit of measure with this button from psi to bar, kPa, or kilograms per square centimeter. Now let's make some smoke by pressing the large button. Again, notice all the controls work just like before. But now let me show you how I conduct a vacuum leak test. As you can see, vehicles have a ton of different hoses which can potentially eventually either pop off or sometimes break and then they begin to leak and cause problems. Most of the time, it is not that easy just to see it with our eyes. So here's where we're gonna inject smoke to find out if any of these hoses have broken over time or have come loose. For this test, I'll remove the air filter to insert smoke via the intake. After loosening this clamp, I can pull this filter right off. Now I can insert the cone adapter so it's nice and tight and then I'll connect the smoke hose to it. Now it's just a matter of waiting a few minutes while the machine fills the system with smoke. If there are any leaks found, visible smoke will be seen coming from the area of the leak. and large leaks will actually show a ton of smoke. Also notice the smoke machine can help me find hidden leaks such as damaged hoses or lines. But it is important to point out that vacuum leaks will not always trigger a check engine light. Sometimes vacuum leaks will just lead to the great performance on the engine or other issues that may come up long term as a result of a vacuum leak that was left unresolved and it just got worse over time. So it's better to find them early on and fix them before they can cause some real trouble. Moving over to test number two, this is the EVAP test, the Evaporative Emissions Control System of the vehicle. Typically Typically, an EVAP leak will trigger a check engine light and it will tell you the code EVAP related such as a small leak or large leak. 
Sometimes if the leak is small enough, it is possible that we can have a leak without a check engine light. But again, over time it can get worse, so it is better to find them early on. So we have tested for vacuum leaks up front. The EBAP system consists of the vapor lines that are going towards the fuel tank, including the integrity of the fuel cap. So by inserting or injecting smoke into the EBAP system, we can test the integrity of those vapor lines and find if there are any leaks on the way to the gas tank or if there are any leaks on our fuel cap. Let me show you how the EBAP system test is performed. First, I need to locate the EBAP test port. On this vehicle, it's located here where the green cap is at. And locating the port can also be done by looking at the emissions control label on the hood or by looking at the service manual. Notice on this label, the service port is located here, right before the perch solenoid. Now that I located the port, I'm going to remove the green protective cap. Then I can remove the valve inside the port using the included valve removal tool. I simply insert the tool and turn clockwise to remove the valve. Once the valve is loose, I can carefully remove it. Next, I'll screw in the included EBAP adapter. And now I can connect the smoke hose to the adapter hose and begin to insert smoke. Removing the fuel cap can also help to ensure that the system completely fills with smoke. As soon as the smoke starts coming out from here, I can put it back to close the system. And if I still saw smoke coming from here, this would indicate a worn out fuel cap. And finally, when conducting the EBAP leak test, it does help to raise the car to check for leaks along the bottom of it. Let's also learn to use the flow meter to detect leaks. Notice that as the system fills up, the pressure reaches the maximum number we chose, but also the flow meter drops to indicate that there is no more air that can be inserted, which means that there are no leaks in the system. Now, it is possible that we will reach the maximum air pressure we chose, but the flow meter will still show air flowing into the system. This indicates that we are losing air somewhere, so there is a leak in the system. And now that we tested for vacuum leaks up front, and we know the integrity of the EBAP system is okay, we can also check for leaks in the exhaust system. And that includes the exhaust all the way from the back, all the way up to the back of the engine to the exhaust manifold. A leak in the exhaust manifold area can lead to poor performance and can also lead to an engine running rich, which can eventually damage the oxygen sensors. And those leaks may not always trigger a check engine light. So let me show you how I test for leaks by connecting the smoke machine to the exhaust system of the vehicle. To test the exhaust system for leaks, I'm gonna insert the cone adapter so it's nice and tight then I can connect the smoke hose to it and begin to insert smoke. Now because this car has dual exhaust, I'm also going to plug the open one while I conduct this test. Now I can inspect the entire exhaust system all the way to the exhaust manifold looking for smoke to find the leaks, which are usually found in the joints or gaskets of the exhaust. And when done testing, VX Scan recommends running the unit in air only mode for a little bit to clear out the remaining smoke inside the unit. And here's one way that we can use that air pump only mode. This little guy is activated by air, and if I wanted to test if this works, I could put air pressure onto the line that drives it and confirm if it moves. So let's try that out. I'm gonna connect the line to it, and then we'll put some air. Now this should start to move around 4 PSI and I can confirm with the display that it is in fact working correctly. And what I just showed you are the most common uses for a leak detector. However, this leak detector can be used in multiple applications only limited by the imagination of the person who is using this to test for leaks because of how versatile it is in the ability to inject smoke into something and for us to visually find that smoke allowing us to detect a leak. So remember, I put a link in the description down below to the VX Scan V4 leak detector in case you want to get one for yourself. And if you have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments also. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button and and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool car videos coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one.